Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today we're going to be talking all about my IKEA greenhouse, specifically this one right here, which is the Millsbo Tall. I also have the other version of the Millsbo, which is the wide version down here below, but we're not going to be talking about that one so much today because I'm going to be giving a one year update on this bad boy. It's actually been a little bit over a year now since I got it, but you know, close enough. So what we're gonna be covering in this video is the setup. So I'm gonna be talking about all of the accessories that I've added to this cabinet and kind of giving my thoughts on how everything has held up over the past year, if I would change anything. Also, if you're new here and you have not seen my setup video, um, I actually have a couple different videos um, covering this cabinet and one of them is the like complete setup. So I'll create a playlist and I'll link it down below so you guys can go catch up on the rest of the IKEA Greenhouse videos if you haven't seen those yet. But yes, for today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the setup, kind of reviewing everything. I'm also going to be talking about the plants, letting you know which ones have done really well in the cabinet. And I'm also gonna be talking about transitioning plants out of the cabinet. I've only done this with a few plants really, but I will show you those plants and kind of let you know how that's gone for me. Because I am kind of getting to the period where, you know, a lot of my plants are getting larger in here, they are outgrowing the cabinet, and then you're kind of in this position where it's like, okay, what next? Like they've been living in these ideal conditions and now I need to move them elsewhere. I'm also gonna touch on moving this bad boy because I have moved twice, two or three times since I've owned this cabinet. And as you can see, it is still uh, intact. So that's very good. And I'm also going to be talking a little bit about just like little ways that I've customized mine, little like hacks that I found. So let's just hop into the setup. Okay, so let's open her up, take a look. Okay, so here's an overview. I actually have quite a number of plants in here right now. I'm not gonna be going through every single one, of course. It's not gonna be like a thorough tour. Um, I am gonna touch on the plants after we talk about the setup. Okay, so the setup that I have in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet is actually a pretty popular one with the Scatus accessories. This is all from IKEA. Um, if you go to my setup video, everything is linked that is in this cabinet. Um, so the pegboard, and the accessories, that's all from Ikea. And I will say that I'm really, really happy with this accessory setup. Um, I don't use all of them. Like, I feel like I went a little bit overboard with uh, buying the Scatus accessories. Like, I definitely have a few of them that are empty. I love the shelves, especially. They're awesome and they're like the perfect width for four inch pots. Um, I do not use the clips a whole lot. Uh, you can see there's three of them down there that I'm not using and then there's three up here that I'm not using as well. I know some people do like hang pots from them and whatnot, which maybe I would do if they were placed a little bit higher up, but I haven't really found a great use for them. I have clipped vines a couple times in the past and I also did use it to kind of organize wires a little bit. Maybe I should do that with this one because this one's just kind of dangling here. But yeah, haven't used the clips a ton. But overall, I'm super happy with um, all the accessories. And I did wanna talk about the pegboard a little bit because I do get quite a few questions about it. Um, and the main question that I get is people asking if I've experienced any molding on mine and I have not had any mold issues. Um, I also get asked if I have sealed it with anything and I have not. This is just how it came. Um, and I don't know, I guess I'm just lucky because I haven't had any mold growing on it. I have heard that some people have had that issue, so it's probably a good idea to seal it, but I have not, and yeah, so far so good for me. And I think that a big reason that I have not had that problem is because I have two fans running in this cabinet, and I guess I'll talk about the fans quickly right now. So I have one right there. This one's off because I didn't want it to be super noisy. Um, and then I have another fan up here. So they're on both levels and they're on opposite sides. So the air circulation in here is pretty good. Um, I will say that in the summer when we were having a lot of heat waves, my cabinet was drying out a lot and I couldn't keep up with the watering. So I was just running the fans during the day and keeping them off at night just to kind of preserve some moisture in the cabinet. And when I was doing that, I did get some mold. 
Not on the pegboard though, it was just happening on my plants, like in the soil. So I've switched it back to running the fans 24 seven and I don't have any issues with mold anymore. So I definitely think that air circulation in these cabinets is extremely important. I would definitely, you need at least one fan in here. I would suggest two because I've had really good luck with that. And mine are the Vornado brand. I will link them. Um, and I run mine on the second setting. I'm pretty sure. Let me look. Um, Okay, I lied. I think that it's just on number one. There's number one and number two. So if you need more circulation, you could put it on number two, but number one is just this like very gentle breeze. You can see it does move the leaves a little bit, but it's nothing aggressive. So I've been really happy with those fans. I don't love that they take up room on the shelving because that would be plant space if it wasn't there. Um, I could look into like, I don't know, suspending it somehow or having it higher up. Um, I just haven't yet. So I've just kind of left them there. And honestly, I can fit a lot of plants in here even with those fans. But if you are, are able to get one that you can mount somewhere, that would probably be even better. Okay, so let's talk about what has been my biggest problem with this setup. And it's not a huge problem, it's just more of an annoyance. And that is the weather stripping. So this weather stripping, it doesn't really stay on if I'm being completely honest. I feel like I'm constantly like re-sticking it back on. I have to be really careful when I close the door to like pull it up and out of the way or else it'll just get kind of crunched and it'll unstick. Um, like I just had to stick this back on last night because it had completely come off. So this is the original weather stripping that I put on a year ago at the end of 2020, I put this on and like it's still on, it's just a bit of a pain in the butt because I have to, it peels off and then I have to kind of stick it back into place. So I don't know if I would use this specific type of weather stripping again. I will say that it works pretty decently, like as for keeping the humidity in, but it just is, it's just a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna lie. So that's one thing that there's probably a better way to do or to go about it. Um, and I just haven't really like put any effort into finding out what that is. I'm just kind of, I don't know, I'm just used to it by now, just kind of fiddling with it all the time. So it doesn't bother me a lot, but it is something that is less than ideal about my setup. Something else that's uh, a little bit of, becoming a little bit of a problem, which is my fault is, okay, to get this out of the way to show you. So I do have the holes drilled into the bottom of mine and I didn't seal them with anything and I am getting a tiny bit of rust, if you can see that. It's just starting to rust. So I really need to put something on that. Um, so hopefully I can prevent it from rusting further. But yeah, I would definitely say if you are going to be setting up one of these cabinets and you're going to be using a hole saw to drill out um, the bottom for cords, definitely seal it with something so that you're not gonna get rust like me. I also noticed rust, uh, I noticed rust right here. This is just a little, um, like bump in the metal that keeps the glass in place and mine is a little bit rusty so you know to be honest though you guys we can't have super high expectations when it comes to like the waterproofing or rust proofing of this cabinet because it's not built for this it's not made to be a greenhouse um it's just made to be a display cabinet so things like rust are probably going to happen i don't know how long i'm curious to see how long the lifespan is going to be for this cabinet like how many years i will have it hopefully a really long time um but yeah, it's definitely not built to be holding a lot of moisture. So things like that are probably gonna happen. Okay, so let's talk about the lights quickly. I have my Fiat grow lights in here. I'll have, like I said, I'll have everything linked below. I'm not sure the model or anything off the top of my head, but they are more of that like pinky toned, pinky hue lights, um, which is fine, but it's definitely not my favorite in comparison to something like my plant spectrum lights. That just looks so bright and fresh and it just looks like natural sunlight um, in comparison to something like this. I will say that these lights work well, they do the job. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the way that they look anymore. I mean, I guess I'm just like, I'm just comparing it to my Plant Spectrum Grow lights and I love those lights so much. So it's, it's hard to not like have that comparison in my brain. But I will say that these do the job, they work well. They're a more budget friendly option. Um, it would probably look a lot better if you have a white cabinet as well. Mine is black, so obviously the like bulky white plastic is not 
not very complimentary, um, but my plants seem to like these lights. They don't really burn anything either, which is nice. Like I haven't really experienced a lot of burn, um, which is good because, you know, there, there's a pretty short distance between some of the plants and the light. As you can see, I have some Hoya that are pretty much directly under this light and they seem to like it. So um, overall, I'm happy with the light. Would, will I be upgrading it when these eventually die? Um, yes, probably. I will say something else about the lights. It is nice that you can daisy chain them. So, um, because we, you know, once you got the fans and everything going on, two fans, two lights, um, you kind of have a lot of cables. So you can daisy chain the two lights. This one is just the cord from the top light that's plugged into there. And then this is the one that goes down and is plugged into a power source. And I do just have it, this second one, zip tied onto the shelf, which I'll talk about. Um, so I used to have the original glass shelving in here and I have upgraded to this custom shelf, which I'll show you in a moment. But yes, the light is zip tied onto there. So it was pretty easy to just hook it onto there. I did have a lot of problems trying to get this light to stick onto glass though. I had twine just like wrapped around this for a long time for like, close to a year honestly because it was the only thing I could find that would really keep my light up um, so I'm really happy that I have this new shelf because it's just so much easier um, so this is a custom shelf that was made and I'll link this down below as well but yeah this is very cool I know a lot of you guys have seen this but uh, let me move some plants it says wild fern there uh, and it has a bunch of plants it's so stinking cute I love this shelf so much and I was really excited to upgrade to this shelf because um, it allows for so much more air ventilation so now I have air vent ventilation throughout the entire cabinet rather than just having those separate smaller compartments which is really nice and it just looks it looks so much more sleek I love the black it's just I'm super super happy with that shelf so that was a more recent upgrade that I made to the cabinet. So that's kind of my thoughts on the setup and how everything has been going over the past year. Oh, of course I also have my hygr hygrometer in here, which is only reading at 59% right now because obviously we've had both of the doors open for a little while now. So that's another, um, another thing that I would say is pretty necessary for this setup, just so that you can monitor the humidity and the temperature. But let's move into the plants here quickly. Um, I'm just gonna talk about some plants that I really like to keep in the cabinets. Um, so the first thing that I found for both of my cabinets actually, uh, is that I really love having moss poles in here. And one reason for that is that it's a really good way to kind of kickstart my plants um, growth. Like when I have younger plants and I really wanna see them get more mature, it just gives them like these optimal growing conditions. And now I'm seeing my plants like approaching the top of the pole, which is so awesome. So I feel like it's a really good way for plants to just become more established. By the way, if you're seeing any like dots or any, this this one looks awful. Uh, the streaks and the dots are just neem oil. So sorry, I know they look kind of sloppy, but uh, yeah. And the second reason that I love putting moss poles in here is because it increases the humidity, you guys. Like having moss in here, moist moss, is going to keep your cabinets more humid overall. I don't have a humidifier in here. I forgot to mention that because I think that's just overkill, that's too much. If you weather strip, like this is a small enclosed area um, and especially with weather stripping and just having plants in here that are moist, your humidity is gonna stay pretty, pretty high. Mine is typically between 80 to 90%, which I'm really happy with. Um, but yeah, having moist moss in here definitely gives that a boost and it also works like inversely as well in that my moss takes longer to dry out. So I'm not like having to wet these moss poles every single day, which is really nice. So I definitely recommend if you're into moss poles or like growing in moss in general, um, these cabinets are a really great option for that. Yeah, even just for plants that are um, potted in moss, you know, I have my anthurium seedlings going on here, very happy in here. Um, this monstera dubia is in moss there. And things just tend to stay just a little bit more moist in here because of that higher humidity. The second thing that I wanna highlight are my alocasias. Oh my goodness, you guys, if you are an alocasia person, if you're into alocasia, uh, this greenhouse cabinet is going to be your best friend because, oh my goodness, I just have not seen this. I just don't think I would be getting this type of growth if these plants weren't in the cabinet. I will find out because I am going to be taking this plant out soon, 
but this was a baby a year ago, like baby, you guys, very small. And now it's massive, very mature. And I can definitely attribute that to the humidity and the lighting um, and the temperature that the, this plant is receiving in cabinet conditions. It absolutely loves it in here. So if I had to choose a genus that just really explodes in the cabinet, um, yeah, alocasia, love it. There's my fried egg over here. This was also a tiny baby a year ago, which is just crazy. And this one's getting massive as well. So these are probably both gonna be coming out of here within the next, oh, I don't know, few months probably. So I'll definitely keep you guys updated on that. That is going to be interesting. Just any type of plant that's gonna appreciate more humidity, that's more sensitive to humidity. Like I have my Begonia Jula over here, which is a plant that requires pretty high humidity and it's happy in here. It's a really great spot for plants that need a little bit of rehab as well. Not in the sense that they have a pest because obviously you don't wanna introduce that to all of your plants in your cabinet, but just plants that have been struggling a little bit for whatever reason, or plants that um, just need a little bit of help, a little bit of a boost. For example, this is my philodendron brandy that I just potted up um, not long ago, actually, just a few days ago. And since it's just transitioning from my prop box to being potted in soil, I decided to pop it in the cabinet because it's just gonna have a better chance at growing into a strong plant if I kind of put it in the cabinet for a while and then maybe later on I can transition it out. My Hoya seemed to like this cabinet a lot as well. And I know a lot of people have this experience. Oh my goodness, look at the pink. Oh, I love this plant. Um, a lot of people do have their Hoyas in these cabinets. I know that some people have like just, just designated Hoya cabinet um, because Hoya do tend to love the humidity in here, love the light. It's just like prime conditions for them. I've only had a couple of plants that didn't do well in here. I mean, first of all, the obvious ones, I wouldn't put any like cacti or even succulents in here really. Um, but other than that, the plants that I have had not love the cabinet, so does that make sense? The plants that didn't love the cabinet are my Monstera Albo, which I'm not sure if that was a one-off or not, but I feel like, I don't know. I felt like the light was maybe a little too strong for it and it ended up rotting, so, I don't know what was up with that, if that was just like a one-off unique to me, but I probably wouldn't put it back in here because of that. And then also String of Hearts did not do well in here. And that's a bit of a more succulent plant. So I'm not sure if that's why it didn't really like it in here. Um, but yeah, I wasn't super happy. Maybe those could be both be one-offs, but that was just my experience. Um, I also rotted my Anthurium clarinervium, or no, I rotted two Anthuriums in here actually, but then I've also had Anthurium do really well in here. So it's hard to say. It's just hard to say. It's kind of trial and error, um, but I will say that like 95% of plants have been really happy in here, so that's good. Okay, so I did just want to mention a couple of tricks that I have for the cabinet as well. So the first one, actually maybe I'll show you down here. So the first one is one that I've been doing for a couple of months now, and that is um, filling up some of these little drawers with water. That's just going to give a little bit of a humidity boost again. We're all about the humidity boost in here because I really don't want to have a humidifier in here, but I do want that higher humidity. So I just fill this up with water. I have one um, on the top level that's the same just like halfway full of water and that water is just gonna evaporate. This wouldn't make a difference if it was like sitting in a room, but because this is a closed area, it does help to boost that humidity a little bit. So I have that there. Um, I also, I really like these drawers actually. These two are kind of blocked by this alocasia, so I'm not using them. But up above, I do have my Monstera Dubia, just it's been rooting in moss in that container there. And I just think that that's such a handy way. I've had um, alocasia corms in these containers as well um, and wet sticks even. My Monstera Peru, when it was a wet stick, it was in one of these containers. So if you are picking up any of these Scatus accessories, these drawers are one of my favorites. And then the other thing that I wanna mention is my app for the plugin. So this is running on a smart plugin, that power bar right there. And I will say that this is the most handy thing ever. Uh, it just makes this setup so much more enjoyable because it completely runs itself. Like I said, I keep the fans on 24 seven. It's off right now because of, oops, because of filming. But I have timers for the lights. So I run these lights. Actually, yeah, I guess that's a good question to answer. I run these lights from seven to five. So 10 hours a day and yeah, you can turn them on, turn them off. 
uh, and it's just super easy that it's all automated. So I really think that it's worth it. Those smart power bar things aren't very expensive. Um, I think it was like, I don't know, $25, $30. And it just makes such a huge difference. I don't have to worry about opening this up and turning on all the switches and everything every day. So I would definitely uh, invest in that for this setup as well. You could do just like the um, manual, like it looks like a little dial. I have some of those. I have one right here actually. Uh, this type of timer, um, this is for my my light up here. So you could do one like this, but I just find the power bar convenient for something that's like a whole setup because you have the fans and the lights. Okay, so I really quickly just wanted to talk about moving this cabinet because like I said, I have done it multiple times. And surprisingly, you guys, I have never taken this cabinet apart. I take the accessories out, of course, but I have never taken um, like the glass apart or anything like that. And what I have done is moved it in the bed of a truck. I did this both times, the bed of a truck. I had everything padded in blankets and pillows. So there was layers of blankets underneath the cabinet. And then we set the cabinet down, like laying on its back. And I opened the doors and stuffed it with pillows. So that would kind of like, absorb any impact. I don't know. I remember my friends were laughing at me because they didn't think that it was going to make a difference, but I think it did. I stuffed it with pillows and I just felt so much better about it and then closed the cabinet and then wrapped it up with even more blankets. So basically it was just like ultra padded and um, you just drive slowly and carefully. Actually both times it's been friends driving it for me. So bless. Uh, they were very careful with their driving and my cabinet made it intact. But yeah, that's pretty much how I moved it. I do have moving vlogs for both of my moves, so you can probably watch me do it in those videos. It's just a lot of padding. Take out your accessories, take out anything that's gonna be like jiggling around in there. And yeah, you can unscrew the top and take out all the glass panes and everything. But honestly, I just feel like, well, first of all, that's a pain in the butt, but then you just have all this loose glass. Like I feel like that's even almost more of a risk of shattering, so I don't know, it's it's up to you. I just wanted to just sprinkle this in there. If you're moving, that's how I did it and success. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to be showing you some of the plants that I've taken out of the cabinet and just kind of letting you know how I did that and how they're doing. Okay, so I have a couple actually right here. Actually, you know what? Yeah, we have a few plants here that used to live in the cabinet and do not anymore, so Let's talk about them. Let's talk about this one first. So this is my beautiful Anthurium forgetii, as you can see here. Um, so this was living in my cabinet for several months and gave me this big, beautiful leaf. After this leaf hardened off, I took it out of the cabinet. Just It's just gotten too big to live in there. So yeah, I took it out. And to be honest with you, in my head, I had a plan of like, okay, I'm gonna take it out for five hours and then put it back in overnight and then take it, like I had this big plan, but all I ended up doing was taking it out for one night and then putting it back in the next day and then taking it out the next night and then just leaving it out. So it was a very short transition period. I mean, you could really draw that out and, um, kind of go back and forth between the cabinet and the outside. I don't really know if that would be better or worse because maybe it would cause more stress to the plant. So if anyone has experience with transitioning their plants out of the cabinet, leave your comment down below. I would love to hear how you did it um, and what you think is best. But for me, I just did that very short transition, took it out a little, took it out for a while, um, put it back in and then just took it out permanently after that. Um, and what I did to kind of help it out here a little bit was added this moss to the top. I know that this is a popular thing that a lot of people do with Anthurium, just in general, wherever they live, but I figured that it would just give this plant that little boost of humidity that would maybe, maybe help it in its transition and adaptation to room humidity. And honestly, you guys, since I've taken this out, it's been probably six weeks and I haven't really had anything happen at all. Like I haven't had growth, but I haven't had it decline, which is good enough for me. Um, so I think that it's doing well. All of this damage that you see on the older leaves, that was already there when I took it out. So that's not new. I may, maybe this leaf is a little bit more yellow than it was. So we might lose that one, which is fine. But I did notice when I was looking at this the other day, it looks like it's trying. Okay, the lighting is awful here, I'm sorry. Um, it looks like it's trying to put out new growth. Doesn't wanna focus, but we'll see what happens there. So I've just been kind of keeping this moss moist and yeah, not really too much um, good or bad happening with this, but you know, it's stable, so that's good. 
And then next over here is my Monstera dubia. You guys probably remember that this plant lived in my cabinet for pretty much its whole life until I made this moss plank and potted it up in this pot with the plank. So this plant has transitioned amazingly and I didn't even do any transition period. I just took this out of the cabinet, potted it like this. I have a video on it if you're interested. Um, and then popped it out here and yeah, so there was zero transition with this plant and I honestly have not seen any detrimental effect. This plant still looks perfect. I love Monstera Dubia. I cannot believe. Okay, I was just editing this video and I realized that my mic died and completely cut out for the rest. So I'm going to pick up where I left off and try to remember everything that I said, but we're almost done. So it's fine. Okay, so I was talking to you guys about my Monstera Dubia and I think I was just about to say that I cannot believe how well it has been growing. Like these things are so resilient and it's so cool to see that it's growing up towards the plank here. It's gonna start climbing and I'm just, I'm so excited. This leaf was coming out when I repotted it um, and then it's just continued to vine. I added another piece of plant Velcro here and obviously we're getting a new leaf there so I can't wait to see that unfurl. I'm just, I'm very excited about this Monstera Dubia and I'm so glad that the transition has gone really well. It is getting light from the cabinet. Um, so it's the same like type of lighting. It's not as intense, I will say, because it's further away obviously, but it is like similar lighting. So it just, it seems happy. It has not gone downhill at all, which I'm a little bit surprised about, but yeah, definitely transitioned just beautifully. And then the next one that I have to show is my Syngonium Albo right here. So this lived in the cabinet for quite some time and then it just basically outgrew it. Um, so when I moved, I decided to keep it outside of the cabinet. I actually propagated it, added in some cuttings down here, you can see, to make it a bit of a fuller plant. And this is another one that's done pretty well um, outside of the cabinet. It's definitely not doing like as amazing in that I am getting a little bit of crisping on some of the white parts. If you look at these two, I mean, that's kind of to be expected um, going to lower humidity. So I'm not upset about it or anything. It's growing really well. It's actually given me this really big leaf recently and it's so pretty. Look at all of the different colors on this one. I don't normally get this cool of like sectoral variegation on this guy. So that's really awesome. And then I do have a new leaf coming in, which is almost all white. So that's cool. I mean, it's never ideal, but it is cool to see. So I'm excited to see that one unfurl. Yeah, so another one that I didn't really do anything special, just basically took it out of the cabinet and expected it to survive and it did. So um, yeah, I will say that I tend to be on the more casual side when it comes to plant care. Like I'm not super calculated or super specific about a lot of things. Sometimes I just hope for the best. It's a lot of trial and error. So. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely more laid back with my taking plants out of the cabinet than some people would be, but so far I've just lucked out and my plants have done pretty well. I do have one more I want to show you. It's in the bedroom. Okay, so the last one I wanted to quickly talk about is my Hoya Woliniana UT152, um, and I just thought it would be nice to kind of have a Hoya in the mix to um, talk about taking out of the cabinet. So I took this out um, probably a couple of months ago now, and I did have it on the windowsill. It was growing there, still giving me active new growth. Um, I moved it back here, as you can see, it's now hanging off of the bed frame. Um, so it's not getting like a ton of light anymore. So I haven't really seen any active growth, but honestly it hasn't declined at all. Like it's still doing, it still looks amazing. Like this is a very full, beautiful plant. And I'm sure that once we get into the spring and summer and it's getting a little bit more light, it's just going to take off and start growing for me again. This was a Hoya that was absolutely exploding in the cabinet. Like it was giving me so much growth. I was so blown away by how fast it had grown. Um, so Obviously, I'm not getting that type of growth anymore, and I think that that's kind of a realistic expectation to have when we take our plants out of the cabinet. First of all, there's probably going to be an adjustment period because they're being, you know, thrown into a lot of the times completely different conditions, so they might take a few months to adjust. Um, and if it's a plant that was rapidly growing in the cabinet, it's probably not going to be rapidly growing as much just in your house. So we just need to be realistic about our expectations. But yeah, there's that guy. So as we get closer to spring, I'm probably gonna be transitioning a lot more plants out of the cabinet just because they're just getting too big for it. And that's just kind of the reality of, you know, having this cabinet for uh, over a year now. 
um, and my plants that have been in it have grown a lot and now I need to find new homes for them. So I'll keep you guys updated on the plants that I move out, that whole journey. Hopefully they all do well. I think that they will, especially since I'm going to move a lot of them out in the warmer season or closer to the warmer season. I hope that this video has answered some of your questions. If you're wondering anything else, make sure that you leave it down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I'm